Hi there, and here's a new video. Thanks to a request from a subscriber. Thank you. Your requests are always um, considered, and this is a good one. Okay, we've done fraction subtraction, which is plain old fractions before, where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. But what happens when we have improper fractions or mixed numbers where the numerator is bigger? Well, let's check it out. Best way to answer that question or any question like that is to go ahead and do it and see if the system you already learned works. First of all, we need some uh, lingo here. Um, first of all, some words we'll be using throughout this video are the whole thing and the parts or each part. Okay, so for example, um, here we've got an improper fraction, five halves. And the denominator tells you how many parts are in each whole. Equals parts in each whole. That's W-H-O-L-E, whole. Okay, so for example, in this one, first thing I need to do is show the first number that I'm starting with, five halves. So, I'm going to make a rectangle. And it doesn't matter the size of the rectangle. The rectangle equals the whole. So the size doesn't matter. You're just calling it the whole. So, bam. The, this tells me how many pieces. I'm going to switch colors here. The denominator is, well, I already said that, right? How many parts in each whole? There's two. But I need five of them. So I'm going to make another one. Now how many do I have? Four, right? I have two pieces there. Two more pieces makes four. I need one more to get five. So I'm going to have to make a third hole, right? And now I have six, which is enough to do this problem, okay? So I'm going to shade in five of them, five halves. One, two, three, four, Five. Okay, so I've got my five halves. Next thing I need to do is I need to get one fourth out of here. <clears throat> so step one is going to be each one of these holes. This is also called finding the common denominator, but using rectangle models, we don't really need to do a lot of uh, math or calculating that way. We need to split the holes into the common denominator. All that really means here is I need four pieces in this problem. Other problems will be different. Right now I only have two pieces, so I'm going to cut them into fourths. Now I can take fourths out of there. Next, all I need to do is Take away the numerator, the top number, of the second fraction. And a little trick here, just to make things simpler, it really doesn't affect the answer later, but I always want to keep things simple and save steps whenever I can. Um, keep your life simple. So. I'm going to start with any partials. Start with partial holes. And what I mean by that is if I've got one that's colored in all the way and one that's not, I'm going to start with that one. I'm going to start with partial. So when we go up to our picture up here, I'm going to start with the partial and I need to take away one out of these four pieces that's shaded in. So there's one. I'm showing the subtraction by circling my target and getting rid of it. And now all we need to do is count what's left. I know, right? This is so easy. So, what's left? Well, each hole has four pieces, so that's the denominator. 
right? Because each piece has four. And then the numerator is just going to be what's left. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's the answer. That was so crazy and so easy. By using the rectangle models, not only do you easily see like how to get back and forth from an improper fraction to a mixed number. Did you notice that happen there? Without having to do any math, you got back and forth from an improper fraction to a mixed number without even doing anything, right? Remember our five halves up here? Well, here's two and a half, right? Five halves equals two and a half because it took two holes and one out of two pieces to show the five halves. So we can easily go back and forth between improper fractions and mixed numbers without having to remember any kind of uh, math there, okay? And also uh, down below, the answer, 9 fourths, it's already simplified. We don't have to do anything else. Simplify if you can, you look to simplify, but in this case, we cannot. Whoo, that is cool. Let's do one practice one and then get you out of here, okay? Here's another practice. Two and three fourths minus one and a half. Now this one's different than our first one because I've got them already in terms of mixed numbers and the denominator is smaller than the one I'm starting with. So the other one we had a larger denominator in the second number. So, I need two holes, right? Number of holes. So you draw two rectangles. That's easy. Then, we take uh, how many pieces are in each hole? Number of pieces. There's four. So I'm going to split these into four pieces like that. But this literally says 2 and 3 fourths, right? So I've got the 2 and I need the and means plus. I need another hole to get 3 fourths out of it. So I need a third one. Now I'm going to shade them in. So I've got two of them completely shaded in. That's the two. Then I need three out of four of the third one shaded in. Now this is so easy. If you wanted to make this an improper fraction for some reason, a party trick, just for fun, commercials on TV, whatever. Well, it's quite simple. How many pieces are in each hole? Four. In each hole. And how many total pieces? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Easy enough. And this is where you can actually see. I know, I know, I'm taking a long time. But a normal way of converting a mixed number to an improper fraction would be to uh, take 4 times 2 plus 3. Maybe you learned that algorithm at some point. Well, here you see it happening. There's the 4. There it is two times. And then there's 3 left over. So this actually explains why that algorithm works. Anyway, let's get back to business. We're trying to take away 1 and a half from 2 and 3 fourths. So now I need to find my 1 and a half. And remember, to start with the partial, if you can, Okay, well, here's half, right? That's half of one. I could have gone this way, too. So there's half. There's one, right? There's one and a half. Those are going to go away. Bye-bye. And we're going to count what's left. Count what's left. This is so cool. So easy. Okay, do we have any whole pieces left? 
Yes, there's one hole. And do I have any partial ones left? Remember, this is bye-bye now. That's gone. These are gone. But I do have a partial. I have one partial. How many pieces are in that partial thing? One, two, three, four. There's the answer. One and one fourth. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. So cool. Okay. Well, that's it. Watch out for a second video. I'll do a few practice problems, but uh, we're all over, already over the 10 minute mark here. You're probably not even watching now. I could say whatever I want to. And I will. Thanks for watching and thanks for your requests. Keep them coming and subscribe to Witcher Math. Maybe I'll do your request next. Thanks. Bye.